this is a how-to video. So my basic gear setup here is I've got a uh, lunchbox amp, a 200 watt lunchbox amp, and that's where my guitar is coming through right now. The background music is coming from a G-Deck 330. It's a 30 watt amp made by Fender called the G-Deck, completely programmable. And you can see the little display here. You actually have songs that are, that are uh, MP3 files in a SD card here. And the SD card just plays the song. So you order them like 0000001, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 002, and then that way they're ordered in the way you want them ordered. And you select that. Down here I have a little bit of a pedal frenzy here. This is a, a mini pedal setup. I've got an ultimate drive from Joyo here, a Boss Blues Driver BD2, and I've got a multi, a, uh, a digital effects, that's an FX600 just for some reverb and stuff like that. I've got a bigger pedal board that I normally use, but this one here is great if you want to bring this to a, a gig or whatever, then you've got the basic blues sound. So I've got the ultimate drive set going through a blues driver to get uh, more of a crunchy feel. So if I turn this off, the Joyo pedal off here, I get a very light feel. Sort of like that, when I put that on, there's a bit of gain. And if I put the blues driver on top of that, I end up with craziness here. gear setup. So basic blues, um, it's more of a feel than, than reading sheet music or, or that sort of thing. And there's a bunch of patterns that you have to learn when you're playing the blues. And the simple blues pattern that everybody teaches you on the internet, on YouTube or whatever, is, is the uh, block pattern. You're basically squaring things off here. Like and you can do a lot within that pattern. You can Basically, play with your feel, but you have to learn the pattern really well before you can start playing with your feel. So. A lot of ZZ Top is played in that pattern. You're that's, that's A, so... tends to, to ride their thumb on the string here to give you a harmonic sound. So it's clean. Now I'll try to get her harmonic out of that. Well, you can hear their harmonic there. So this pattern is... This pattern is Standard blues pattern. So you ride this pattern up to this, this, these notes here. And then you ride these notes down. Leaving myself at the root note here. So when you're doing a Stevie Ray Vaughan song, for example, you're, you're trying to play, a, let me see if I can remember anything. You're really doing that pattern, but you're but you're dropping. So you're all you're playing within that pattern. So the point is that if you learn these patterns really well, and you can add notes. Now the other thing is vibratos, or vibratos, so when you're taking your note and you're pulling it up and you leave it just like that, Santana plays a lot of that, like a... And he'll 
hit the note, and you won't do anything with it. You just leave it there. BB King would feather that, feather the note. And what he does there is he anchors his finger down. He puts his finger on the string. He anchors the uh, the finger on the side of the neck of the guitar. And he does that. So you're doing a BB King. Clapton tends to just ride the note up and down. So you just, you see, you see a lot of guitar players that just, just ride the note up and down, sort of to give that vibrato feeling. And it's very important because the blues guitar is supposed to sound like somebody's singing. It's supposed to give you that feel like if you're. nice somebody singing kind of feeling and, and, and effectively you're playing emotionally with blues guitar. So the, so the vibrato is this one here is important. Uh, an Eric Clapton style is good. And then I tend to just anchor my hand and do the and you're moving your whole hand as a unit. And you're going you're going up from the note as opposed to up and down most of the time. You can go down, but you're most of the time you're going up. So you can add accent by bending into a note. So it gives you a bit of a, uh, what do they call it? Musical suspense or whatever. And you're going. And, and, and a human wants to hear that end. They want to hear that conclusion. So they hear it. And that, <clears throat> and that suspense is what gives people that, you know, the closer. As my, uh, my dad used to say, if you play a note, a wrong note, just play it twice and it's jazz. Oh, yeah. So if I... So I hit that note, wrong note on purpose. Play it twice. People think you're playing the right note. So it sounds like jazz. So in blues, uh, the background music is kind of important. So if you want to just practice on your own, you're what I think they're called blues lawyers, guys who've got uh, tons of money and tons of equipment, um, and they just want to play on their own, but they're busy being lawyers, then the, getting a G-Deck amp is great because you can play your background music here, the Fender G-Deck. They don't make them anymore, but you can find them all over the web, and they might cost you 200 bucks max. Uh, get one of those amps. Uh, you can play your guitar through that amp as well. I just have this... Uh, small ZT uh, lunchbox amp, which is kind of cool, easy to carry. And you can play that the bat, that blues kind of background uh, while you're playing, uh, playing, uh, playing the blues and just trying to play what you feel. So I'll play just for two seconds here and give you the, the feel for it. I might start, now this, I think this song's in E, so it starts here. And there's no lead in to it, so I tend to just bend a note up or something when it, when, it, when it starts. One other thing too is I learned this years ago from a guy that lives where I live. I'm not going to tell you that, but anyway, the guy who lives where I live and you want to hit a solid blues note here. When you hit this, this note here, if you're playing an A, and you go, sounds good, but if you just... That, the way you do that, and this guy taught me this years ago, is that you slap your, your, your pick down, so you're really hitting, you're numbing the strings here with your hand, like that. And then the last string is not numb, so when you... Of course I couldn't do it right. Anyway, 
<laughs> so it's not numb, but yeah. <laughs> tend to get that vibrato in there and it gives you a really nice like you lead up to you and that is cool there's no other way of saying it. it's just cool um, another lick I want to show you just quickly and then I'll shut up is is when you do this and that's a standard uh, Hendrix, uh, I think Hendrix did it first, and probably guys did it before Hendrix, but and Steve Ray Vaughan does it. Steve Ray Vaughan had a, a pull-off, and, and I heard recently that he did it on a minor. But that lick here... Pretty common in the blues, and a nice smooth run in that is by taking this, sticking your fingers here and going up, and then pulling the second string up, and then the bottom. <laughs> That's a kind of a cool, smooth run with the uh, blues lick. I do it with a picking of going down. Let's see if I can get closer here. That's it for now. Uh, if you're interested in me showing any more, I will. If you're not, then that's, this is it. Um, the blues is kind of cool. Uh, keep playing the blues. Uh, the great, great thing about it is you don't have to learn how to read sheet music.